Hello again everyone, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. My name is Mars, and today we're going to be talking about King Edgar of Figaro. Now this is one of those units that uh, I kind of slept on a little bit when uh, he first came out, and I know a lot of other people did too, because if the FF6 banner with Edgar and Sabin on it came and passed, and all you were really interested in was Sabin, you probably didn't pay much attention to Edgar, who in my opinion is the best breaker there is. And he's somebody who has really impressed me, I've had a ton of fun playing with him. So today I wanted to highlight him and everything that he can do, and kind of talk about how you can use him in your party. So the first thing I want to do is give a quick overview of the skills that are most important to you. Um, I think his Noise Blaster and Bio Blaster are his two kind of standard on-demand breaks, but they are only 50%, so you basically only want to use them if you have to. Otherwise, I would probably, probably not use them. Yeah, because they're not good. <laughs> Aside from that, you do have a lot of other abilities that can help you along the way. Uh, Flash is a good way to apply a, an on-demand light imperil, and debilitator water and debilitator earth can both apply earth and water imperils of 85%, and they also break defense by 60%. So if you're in need of on-demand defense breaks, those can help you out and apply, imper apply imperils while they're at it. Uh, one of the other unique abilities about Edgar is Air Anchor. Now this is an interesting one because it applies a 70% full break to a single target, but it doesn't apply until the start of the following turn. So this is actually really handy for countering self-dispelling bosses, but it could also be a pain in the butt if you don't have it available when you need it. Rejuvenator does some MP restore as well as filling Edgar's own limit burst gauge, and Enhancer Machine is a nice way to give somebody extra machine killer buff. And you'll see here with Air Anchor, it's not gonna give a break, and then at the start of the next turn, it'll apply. So we'll see the animation right here. Yep, so that's that 70% full break. Now Edgar really starts to shine when you start using his cooldown abilities. Bravo Figaro is probably one of the most notable ones. This is a 74% full break for three turns that imperils earth and water by 100% and it boosts Edgar's LB fill rate, which is super handy because he is primarily an LB breaker, so you do want that LB fill rate. So starting out of the gate, this is probably gonna be the skill that you use 90% of the time when you start a fight. And he plays a little tune, it sounds really cool. <laughs> Um, really handy for starting out. Uh, one thing that I've noticed that I'll do sometimes is on turn one I won't necessarily use that. Um, if I have like a turn one breaker like Sylvie who will do it instead. But it is, uh, it, it's a good one to use if you have a single target that you want to break on the first turn. Uh, Royal Shock we'll cover real quick. Uh, this is designed to sink Edgar's HP below 20% kind of uh, manually, so we'll see right here. It's an ability that does quite a bit of damage and it changed with the Ariel Ray family, but most importantly, it brought his HP below 20%. And the reason why that's notable is because it will upgrade his LB, which we'll talk more about later, but it's a handy way to force his HP below 20% if you need that, and do a little bit of damage along the way if you have an Ariel Ray chainer such as Esther or somebody else. Um, I haven't actually used the ability much, but it is handy in the case that you want to upgrade his LB. Now the ability that I use a lot, and this is one that you can multicast, and in fact you can multicast all of his abilities except for Bravo Figaro, so you can see all of them down here. Uh, Awkward Inventor is really nice because that unlocks Edgar's kind of unique skills or his upgraded version of his skills. So we'll take a quick look at those. Uh, the problem with Awkward Inventor is that it's a 20 turn cooldown skill, which I have no idea why they did that. It's 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 too much. Like, Awkward Inventor is not that good uh, for it to deserve 20 turns of cooldown. It does grant him LB fill rate as well as the rest of the party. It also gives Machine Killer to the party, so, you know, there's some great stuff there. And it unlocks his abilities, but like, dang, 20 turns? You know, I think that's a little heavy handed and that does hold him back. However, um, it's not gonna make or break Edgar, honestly. Now some of these abilities are really handy because they give you on-demand options for breaking, for example. So we can use Critical Call and Armageddon Blast together. That does a 70% all stats break to all enemies. And it looks really cool. I'm a huge fan of that. 
Now some of his other abilities include Rejuvenator plus two. This restores even more MP and fills even more LB gauge than his other one. Uh, but Trifecta Drill is one that you will probably use quite a bit, at least I do. I find it very, very handy. Um, and Corona Beam is an AoE light imperil, just by the way. But Trifecta Drill is handy because it's a single target, 100% imperil to earth, water, and light. So obviously you're not going to have full uptime on it because it only lasts for one turn, and because you can only use it under the effect of Awkward Inventor. However, it is really handy for setting up burst turns for units that are not able to imperil the element themselves. Uh, super handy to combo with Sylvie, for example, because Edgar can imbue Earth and Light, which are both elements that Sylvie can imbue. So it is really handy in that regard. Now Edgar's best ability, hands down, is his Limit Burst. And this Limit Burst is amazing because he summons a giant castle out of the sand, Summons an army and a harem of women, and yeah. This LB taught me that Edgar is basically the uh, Sieg heart of FF6, so he's basically just Spicy Castle Sieg heart. Huge fan of that. Um, and this Limit Burst is amazing because it breaks all enemies by 84% to all of their stats. And it's the, the breaks that are applied last for a total of three turns, but they are degrading breaks, which means that on the first turn, it's 84% for all stats, and on the second turn, it's 74% for all stats, and on the third turn, it's 64% for all stats. Now you say, well, that's not that good, because you only get the 84% break for the first turn. That is true, unless you bring Edgar's HP below 20%, then his limit burst is upgraded to be 84% for two turns. So it reduces the break duration, but it does increase the overall effectiveness of the breaks. Now, the way that I tend to use him is I just spam the crap out of his LB every two turns, because 74% breaks are still really, really good, but it's handy to have the 84% if you're going to cross a threshold or take a lot of damage from a boss. And it makes a really, really big difference. So for Edgar, I'll use his Limit Burst every other turn, or even every turn, if I don't have another support ability I would like to use. Now, Edgar's LB is probably the most important part of his entire kit, so let's take some time to look at some builds that can help you make sure that you have it up all the time. Now the first build I'm going to show you with King Edgar of Figaro is, this is, this is my personal build, or it's quite similar to it. Because um, there are a couple of these STMRs that I don't have, like I don't have Nyx's Dagger or LFM's Dress, uh, but I can use any other dagger with the High Tide Plus or uh, a chess piece with High Tide as well. But this build is designed to maximize uh, his limit burst fill rate percentage, as well as give him some auto limit on the side. Uh, Lust Dagger is a, a very nice piece of equipment to use for Edgar because if you have the rare item roll mod for it, it gives King Edgar 200% LB fill rate, and you can combine that with another dagger that has LB fill rate. I use uh, Zeno's Obsidian Helm for another 50% LB fill rate, Elephim's Dress or uh, like Reagan's Trench Coat or uh, Maritime Strategy, or no, 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 no. Uh, it's the swimming trunks nickel. Uh, his STMR, all of those give 50% high tide as well. Coin of Fate Edgar also gives high tide. Jake's Pirate Ring also gives high tide. Dream of the Faith also gives high tide. It's 150%. That's Titus's STMR. Heroes Vow Earth also gives high tide. This is only 50%, but it it gives you a ton of defensive stats, which is something you want. Accelerating power, uh, this is something from Mama Chocobo's Den. That's 100% high tide. And then Pure Lotus for some more auto limit. So altogether, this is the limit burst and master <laughs> build. Like you will have your limit burst every single turn. So with this particular build, you don't get a ton of auto limit. Uh, you do get one from Jake's Pirate Ring, you get two and a half from Pure Lotus, and you can get one from Carbuncle if you spec'd Carbuncle for that as well. So you do get a few auto limit crystals, but the main draw of this build is that it gives you 920% high tide. And I know there may be some people out there who say, but Mars, is there not a 400% cap to high tide like there is for attack or magic or defense or spirit or HP or MP? And the answer to that is no. Um, high tide has no discovered cap. Um, 
We've, we've seen people build as high as like 800% and confirm that it is indeed not capped at 800%. This build is to 920%, which is absolutely overkill. You probably don't need this much, but I also just like summoning the castle every single turn because having 84% breaks every single turn is ridiculous. Um, so, and in, in basically for those who, who don't necessarily understand, uh, how high tide works, it basically multiplies the value of every limit burst crystal that is generated in, in battle. So in this case with 920% high tide, that means every crystal that goes to Edgar actually counts as 10 crystals. <laughs> so that means he only needs three to completely fill his limit burst every single turn. And that's excluding personal buffs. So for example, if he has his 300% LB fill rate buff up or his 200% one, uh, he would get 12 or 13 crystals for every one that dropped, which means he only needs two crystals to drop to fill his limit burst to full. And the nice thing, his limit burst generates a lot of crystals because it hits a lot of times. So it's very easy for him with a build like this to fill his limit burst just by using his limit burst. So. Um, definitely a build not to be discounted, but I know a lot of people don't necessarily have these TMRs or these STMRs. Not to worry, I have another more budget build for you. And this one is still highly, highly effective. You will not be disappointed with this build at all. This one follows a similar principle where most of our high tide comes from the Lust Dagger and a second dagger that has the rare item world roll for it. So we have, uh, what, 350 high tide from the daggers. <clears throat> Um, and he has 100% in his, in his personal passive, so that's 450 by itself. Uh, the Royal Crown gives a little bit more. The Mystical Skull gives, I believe, 50%, as well as some MP refresh. And the Bling Necklace is another one I included, because this is a good example of an item that gives you some defensive stats, as well as some high tide. And it gives about 25%, if I remember right. Or maybe it's 20%. I think it's... I don't know. It's 20... I think it's 20%. It's either the Royal Crown or Bling Necklace that only does 20%, the other does 25%. Uh, in the chest slot, there are no uh, non-STMR items that give you high tide, so I just put Ozetta's armor just for some defense. You can put whatever you want there. Now, Accelerating Power was from the previous build. Uh, this is 100% high tide that you can get from the Chocobo Den. I've also included Bomb Spirit, which is a trial reward. It gives you, I believe, two auto limit. And then Master of Machinery is his Trust Master reward that triggers his Trust passive to give you additional auto limit, I believe. And then Heart Overcoming Hatred is another two auto limit crystals per turn in conjunction with Carbuncle. And so with this build, uh, you're not gonna get the same ridiculous high 920% high tide, but you can get a total of 645%. And you can see he's tanky enough, he's quite decent. Um, and in addition to this, he gets 7.5 auto limit crystals as well, which means he really only needs the same as the previous build, maybe three or occasionally four crystals to completely fill his limit burst so that you can use it as frequently as possible. So these are basically the builds that I recommend um, to help you get that limit burst up all the time. Now, a lot of people are gonna say like, well, you know, how does King Edgar compare to Fid or how does he compare to these other breakers? Honestly, he's just different. His breaks are better, definitely. His support kit is not as strong. So it depends on what your entire party needs. I personally like King Edgar Figaro quite a lot because 84% breaks are nothing to sneeze at. Um, and, and being able to have that up 100% of the time by filling your limit burst like every turn or having your HP drop below 20%, to have a strength and limit burst or whatever. It's just a lot of fun to play with. And using his awkward inventor and some of those other things to unlock additional skills that you can kind of, you know, plan ahead and, and plan for burst damage or for better for for better breaks or for some of those other things. It's just a lot of fun to use. Um, I think he's definitely a straight upgrade to Heavenly Technician Lid. Um, I can't really think of any significant ways where she is better than Edgar. I think Edgar is better in virtually every way. 
Uh, if you compare them to other units like Lauren or Auron or Beowulf, those units have better chaining support, which is handy, but their breaks are worse. Some units have better on-demand breaks, such as Auron, who has 60% single stat breaks, but their maximum power breaks are not as strong as King Edgar Figaro. So, um, and others have easier access to imperils, or in the case of Fid, you even have an imbuing option. Um, Edgar's on-demand imperils are so-so, but a lot of breakers also only have so-so on-demand imperils. So, it's kind of a wash in that regard. Other than that, I think uh, Edgar's who you want to use if you're looking for high tier breaks and for someone who is just fun to use. Uh, the other breakers, I, I that's the thing about breakers, all of them get the job done. I think Edgar is much much easier to keep limit burst uptime on because his, his does fill so freaking quickly. Um, and, and so things like on-demand breaks have never really been an issue for me. Um, but ultimately, if you have a 7-star breaker, you're probably good to go. But if you're trying to decide on a 7-star breaker and you already have one King Edgar of Figaro, you definitely can consider UO seeing him for that 7-star version. Um, because he really is, he's just a powerhouse, he's ridiculous, and I plan on using him as much as possible because I love his kit, I love kind of the complexity and the flavor behind it, I know it's definitely not as simple as a lot of other breakers, but he is tremendously fun. And I kind of came to the realization that he's basically just Siegheart, but with a big old sandcastle that he can summon out of the ground, so like, of course I love him. So <laughs> you know that that is why I chose King Edgar of Figaro and, and why I continue to use him. So uh, let me know in the, down in the comments below, have you actually used King Edgar of Figaro before? Is he somebody that has found his way onto your team or into your roster? I'm curious because since his banner came and left, I haven't heard a lot about him. So uh, go ahead and tell me about your experience with this unit, if you have any at all, and let me know what you would like to see in the next video, and that's where I will see everybody next time.